In this next step, we're going to take all these parts and get them mounted inside the case. So the power supply needs to go inside. This cover plate, which came with the motherboard, needs to go in its appropriate hole in the case. The motherboard needs to go inside here, and we're going to have to add these little things called standoffs to hold the motherboard in the right position. And then there are about 15 wires here that get connected up to the motherboard. And it's really straightforward. The manual tells you exactly where to put them, but we just have to do them one at a time using the manual to guide us. What we're going to do here is we're going to put the motherboard and the power supply inside the case and get it all bolted down. So there is a plate that came with the motherboard and it fits into a specific hole that's already been cut into the case. So our first thing is to just drop that in. And it's sort of like the RAM, you just have to apply enough pressure. And in this case, you're going to hear an audible click. <clears throat> I say, you are going to hear, there you go, an audible click when it's in the right spot. Now the next thing is the motherboard. It needs to screw into this case and it needs to be held about a quarter of an inch away from the case so none of these little connectors actually touch the case with a set of six brass spacers. Now every motherboard is different so your challenge here is to get the motherboard into the case and see which holes on the motherboard are going to actually match up with the holes that have already been drilled into the case. And it's really easy when you're actually inside there doing it. You just put the motherboard in, kind of see which holes it lines up with, and then uh, pull the motherboard back out and drop the spacers in. So now we've got the spacers in. We're just going to drop the motherboard in and we've got to line it up with the cover plate that we installed and we have to line up all the screw holes with the spacers we just put in place. With the case you got a whole bag of little screws and you just uh, can sort through those screws and find the ones that fit into the spacers and go ahead and just screw the motherboard down. You don't want to uh, torque these down like you're building an aircraft carrier, you just need to snug them in and that'll be enough to, to hold the motherboard in place. One thing you want to be careful of while you're inserting these screws is you want to get them in the holes and not have them running all over the board scratching it up because there are some really fine wires that have been etched into the board and if you scratch them you're going to mess the, the motherboard up. So now we've got the motherboard screwed into place and we're ready to add the power supply. It's got two sides, a fan side and a wire side. Obviously the wires are going to go inside the case, the fan is going to point toward the outside, and there's really only one way for it to go in there. So you just slide it onto its brackets, uh, wiggle it a little to get it into the proper place, and then there's four screws that either came with the case or came with the power supply that you used to connect it into the case and again you just need to put those in, uh, snug them so that nothing's moving around and the power supply is ready to go. When you look at the wires that come out of that uh, power supply there's one big obvious connector and there's only one place that that big obvious connector can go on the motherboard so you plug that into its appropriate slot on the motherboard and then there's another smaller four pin connector. This is going to supply power specifically to the CPU and there's only one place that that can go on the motherboard. So you just find its place, line it up and both those connectors there's only one way that they can fit. So it's not like you're going to get them rotated or some other weird uh, insertion. You just put them into the obvious hole in the only way they will insert and they'll snap right into place. And what we're left with then is this collection of maybe 15 wires. And I know this looks confusing, but this is really straightforward because the manual contains a page that's going to guide you in how to insert these connectors. So there's one for the front panel USB ports, there's one for front panel audio, and then five for little LEDs and switches that are on the front of the case. So you just find the appropriate location for each of those 
to fit on the motherboard and the manual is really going to help in that because it'll have a page that tells you exactly what to do. Each of the leads coming out of the case is labeled and each of the ports on the motherboard is labeled and you just uh, use the manual and plug it in where it needs to go. All that's left now is fans. This case has a power supply fan, but it also has two extra case fans to keep the air circulating. And there's just a little um, pass-through connector that you plug into any of the uh, leads that are coming out of the power supply, and they'll give the, the fans power. So you just um, find available power sockets and plug them in. And again, there's only one way for them to go. So you, you just plug it in in the obvious way. And at this point, the motherboard power supply and all the connections are ready. All we have to do is add a couple drives to this box and we'll be ready to plug it in.